you talked about some of the issues people are trying to solve. And it made me think that in the healthcare space, there are some, often we talk about that it's so bad that we have monopolies in technology. You have Google, you have Facebook, you have Amazon, which obviously are mon monopolies. But then it made me think that if you take a company like uh, Novo Nordisk in Denmark, right? They're solving out one single problem or they're solving more problems, of course, but their core business is solving one problem very well. So is it also fair to say that in the healthcare industry, there are some very big companies who are gigantic solving problems. So in order to compete them out, it's a very difficult task for a small founding team. Hmm. Yeah, Th that is definitely the case. And that is why typically we don't invest in trying to outcompete them rather than, you know, we take one part of the development, we get a product to development stage where they would be interesting for the strategics to take them over because, you know, certain areas, you know, bringing a new product from the bench to the market, there are very different stages of development, very different, you know, capabilities that's, that are needed within these different sort of stages. And some parts like, you know, innovation, changing fast, being flexible and agile, that's in the early stages, that's done best by small biotech companies, I would say. Um, whereas at the other end of it, running like huge registrational trials and um, market introduction, bring onto the market, commercializing, that's done typically done much better by the last strategic uh, companies. So, you know, best thing is to combine these two, let the, you know, innovators do the innovation and let sort of the big players take care of that part. So, it's rare that, uh, especially within biotech, that we invest to bring, with the assumption that we will bring this um, onto the market ourselves. That's a great point. So just a couple of final topics. Um, have you met people that you think in, in the wrong development could end up like Elizabeth Holmes or others because healthcare, or you're so scrutinized if you do some mistakes because it's a field where you have to be very careful about the due diligence, right? And it's not always one side, it's the right side, right? So there's very much a nuanced industry as well, right? It is. Um, yeah. And, you know, that's why we are specialists. You know, we, we dig really deep in, um, in the due diligence. So for us, it's really important to understand, you know, where are they in development? Because obviously the most of the comes to look at will be at an early stage. But to be very clear on what do they have at this point and what don't they have? Like we need to understand that. I like think one thing is, you know, when you pitch your company, um, there's a focus on the, the end product, where you want to go. Um, but for us, it's really uh, important to understand, you know, at this point in time, where are we exactly and where does the company need to, to go going forward? Definitely. But it also, it's an important point because you touched upon that uh, women's health are neglected, 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 or we should have more focus on women's health, right? And it it's, should be fair to say that we also should have a focus on more female founders. So I don't know how many female founders you see on your pitch decks, but maybe it's not over 50%, right? It's definitely not over 50%. <laughs> um, we do see some, but not enough. Um, one thing that we are uh, doing is that we are very proactive in terms of trying to find those founders because one thing that we see is that female founders are less aggressive when it comes to chasing investors than male, that male founders are. So male, male founders are very good, typically very good at you know, knocking on our door and showing us what they have and you know, getting that dialogue started early, which is actually quite useful. Um, you know, we reject obviously many more um, male founders than female founders as well, because in terms of numbers, um, but, but getting that dialogue early is very important. And that's useful for, um, for any founder um, to get feedback on, you know, how does an investor see it? What can they do to, to get invest, investment next time they come and knock on the door? And female founders, uh, we've seen that typically not as aggressive doing that. They're very good at preparing, you know, trying to have everything perfect before they come and knock on the door and sort of miss out on the opportunity on having that uh, early start uh, to come to the conversation. So we try to be 
um, very proactive and and find female investors, encourage them to contact us and be you know out there and vocal about wanting to see more female founders. But in your mind, is this sort of a problem that is getting solved naturally, or do you feel like you need to put a bit more forcing powers in order to get as many as you would like and as many as you think will want to start a business? Because we have to be honest that it's not a luxurious lifestyle being a founder. It's super hard and you have to have crazy education, dedication around it, right? So it's a, it's a holistic puzzle in, in one aspect, right? I, I think it's possible, but you're right. I mean, you have to uh, be a bit more proactive and uh, you know, we are doing what we can. And one of the things is that to get more female founders and also female founders funded, it's good to have more female investors. And that's one of the things we've been very proactive about having a balanced uh, team, investment team, so that we have uh, more people sitting on my side of the table um, that are women. I think that's that's quite important. Um, and I think that helps and more and more firms are doing that. Um, and the other thing is that we also, when we work with our portfolio companies, we are working quite proactively with them, encouraging them to also think about it in, in their recruitment processes so that they get the, get the best candidates where they are male or female and not sort of the easiest, you know, obvious male candidates. And when we get better balance in, in the startup companies, you have more women getting experience uh, and also then uh, more, more likely to at some point start their own companies. If you're just trying to sort of have some final reflections on the conversation, so I guess many people call you for advice, they feel inspired, they want to start a new fund or start a new company. Do you generalize some advice or do you always have to answer them specifically, knowing what the person really is like and what they want in life? Or do you have any principles that you think you're taking advantage of and that you also can bring on to the next generation? Yeah, I, I think uh, going back to what we talked about earlier, you know, being a founder and whether you're a founder of a new fund or a new company, I think the same principle applies that you need to yourself be very convinced about the potential of the, of, of the opportunity that you see. Potential of the opportunity, and then you have to be convinced about yourself and your team. Why do you have um, an unfair advantage of leveraging this opportunity? And, and that could be different things, right? It could be that, you know, if it's a sort of company, maybe an invent an invention that's been patented, or you know, if it's a new business opportunity, you see it before everybody else and thereby have a head start. Um, you know, there are different things for why you why you uh, in this opportunity can leverage this opportunity better than anybody else. But seeing that opportunity, why why you and the right timing of it, and when you're like hundred percent convinced to yourself, then you can really just you know put all your attention and dedication and, you know, just stick with it, be persistent. How do you think, I mean, that's a perfect ending, but just to add on, how do you think you will solve that confidence piece? Because maybe that's the hardest piece to solve. If you have the knowledge, you also need the confidence to act on that knowledge. You just, I think you need it. If, if you don't, it's going to be very hard. You know? So I think, if you're convinced and you see that you're convinced, you have the confidence for it, then, then you can throw yourself into it. Without that confidence, you know, it's, it's going to be very difficult. While Perfect. sticking with it and convincing others, you know, you need to convince others and whether it's, you know, getting people, the best people to join your team, investors, etc. cetera. Um, if you don't believe in it, 100% yourself and have the confidence to believe in it, then it's difficult.